you know, you've been flying out to Bangalore, you've been going all over the place, I've been going all over the place. And uh, one of the places that we've been going all over the place to was San Diego last week, where the FinOps Foundation was having their FinOps X show. Uh, it was a great collection of 2000 plus people who were all talking about cloud billing. So uh, cloud billing and expenses, this is my world. I've covered IT expense management for 16 years. And before this, I used to manage expenses and billing over at Bose and at Teradyne. And before that, I used to manage IT billing and telecom billing for a couple of startups. So this is my bread and butter. This is my accidental career. You know, nobody ever says I wanted to grow up and be an IT and expense guy. Uh, you know, I wanted to be an astronaut uh, and, you know, rocket, you know, rocket scientist and a brain surgeon, but, you know, I, I started happened. wanting to be an an actuary, if you believe that, I mean, which like is completely 180 degrees from what I should ever do. So, you know, maybe there's somebody out there who says, I want to be an IT cloud and expense guy. I don't know. <laughs> maybe the next generation. I don't think that really existed as an option, you know, back in the 80s. But be that as it may, uh, there is now this group of thousands of people who think about uh, cloud billing. And uh, one of the announcements that they made over at that conference was about uh, the focus standard. Oh, I guess they're not calling it a standard uh, quite yet. Uh, technically, it is a specification rather than a standard, but it is a set of characteristics for billing that Amazon, Azure, and, uh, and Google have all agreed to. And I find that phenomenal because uh, going back to the telecom days, uh, we I, I've been in several organizations that have tried to get AT&T and Verizon and Sprint to agree to any sort of uh, consistent billing standard. I've been in groups that have tried to make software companies agree to some sort of billing standard and it's never happened before. So I think it's uh, phenomenal that this even exists in the first place that um, we've gotten to the point that Amazon, Microsoft and Google can agree on anything. <laughs> well, I think what is interesting is that uh, to me, it, it demonstrates the amount of pressure that is being brought on the cloud companies to address this issue, right? It is. It was clear at reInvent during the closing keynote. It's been clear pretty much across the spectrum from all the major cloud providers. They're acknowledging the fact that they're they have to address this this issue with the rising cost of cloud, and more specifically about the need for transparency and control around it, which is the entire reason FinOps exists. So, kudos to the FinOps Foundation for for really driving this forward. But I think it's also a reflection of the fact that that there has just been so much pressure to respond to this. But I will tell you the thing that I'm most excited in reading through the focus specification, whatever mm -hmm. whatever they're calling it, is the fact that they have very explicitly left the door open to go beyond just cloud costs, and mm -hmm. and they're calling it to to use by generators of other types of quote unquote cloud like consumption billing data billing data. So more than just the, the foundational cloud providers are talking about SaaS and PaaS and maybe just regular software asset management. And I think that is huge because I've been an advocate of the fact that I love FinOps, but my complaint has always been that it shouldn't just be focused on cloud. And so I'm super excited to see this specification sort of opening that, that door. Yes. And we are also seeing that there are massive IT bills that are just outside of the cloud, whether you're talking about something like Datadog for observability or Databricks and Snowflake competing in this AI and data warehousing world, or the other more traditional data warehousing companies like Teradata, for instance, and IBM, they're all still out there as well. And being able to align our cloud bills to some of those other big bills or some of your other big Salesforce and NetSuite type sales, yeah. you know, all that potential is out there. I don't think that focus is ever going to get out all the way to the, the commoditized SaaS level. You know, there's 60,000 apps out there and all 60,000 of them are not going to adopt focus. But if you can get the big app companies to uh, align to focus and then have that go along with the cloud, players, the big hyperscalers, that would do a lot to make billing a well, lot more consistent. I, I actually, I have probably greater hope for it than not, because if I, if I look at how much of the spend, if they can go and pick up the, the major cloud providers and the major SaaS providers, it is not a big stretch to see an enterprise and, and all the major MSPs and SIs go out there to the world and say, hey, look, 
this is how we're going to take our billing. And if you don't comply to this specification, we're not going to pay you and we can't sign a contract with you. So I don't, I don't think it's a huge stretch to see that this could become this driving standard because, you know, they, they clearly need to get the major SaaS players, but if they do that, they're going to hit a, they're going to hit a center of gravity, you know, the sort of tipping point where they're all, already going to represent a huge chunk of the IT spend where that's the kind of focus, you know, the, the impetus behind this becoming, and, and at the end of the day, it's, it, it makes sense because it's just a standard. It's just, here's the tables you know, they, they, they literally talk about in the spec that it's just a set of columns basically that right. specify this is the data and this is how we're going to report it. It's just like, it's a simple thing and that's its beauty. And so I'm super excited about this. I think it could really be transformative um, for enterprise IT leaders that need to get their arms around this. And, and this is a huge step towards potentially doing that. Yeah. So that would mean that the next stage is really to see whether the likes of Salesforce, ServiceNow, Workday, uh, NetSuite, and some of the software players who are already hyperscalers, uh, such as Oracle and Microsoft, uh, see if they all play along. It. Yeah. And yeah, so that would be, it would be amazing uh, because this has been one of the banes of my career, honestly, trying to figure out how to manage all of these different types of bills and all of these different standards. I've done so much busy work in my life, just trying to align uh, whether a cust ID is also a customer ID, uh, <laughs> you know, what kind of prod versus a product versus a sub product, you know, that's just all these little things that come up when you're trying to align uh, billing information across thousands of vendors. <laughs> well, and I actually think this is part of an ongoing trend that we've talked about before, that we're reaching this sort of a, a new stage or era of rationalization where we need to start normalizing because we're, we're you know, certainly the cloud and even AI, we're now getting to this point where the focus is shifting to oper operationalization. It's not just about blue sky and you know, blue ocean kind of development and figuring it out. It's about how do you actually manage this in production? 